Well, hi, my YouTube friends. Thanks for coming to the channel today. Um, Truth and Lindy. This is probably going to be one long ass video. <laughs> Just thought I'd let you know up front. Uh, and before I get started, let me say thanks to all the new subscribers. Once again, I haven't made a video for three or four days, I don't think. Um, <laughs> But um, I want to just say thanks to like, there's like three or 400 new subscribers to the channel, so welcome aboard. I'm going to be a little repetitive in this video. I'm going to um, say some things that I've said in previous videos. Number one, to keep the story straight in my head. And number two, for the benefit of the people that are new or to the channel and haven't seen the previous videos before. So... If you've already heard some of this stuff, I apologize for being repetitive, but in order to keep the story in some kind of semblance in my mind, <laughs> I'm going to have to go over some of the same material. And once again, welcome to all those that are new to the channel. So I haven't titled this video yet. It's going to be something to the effect of May opening up a banking account or a checking account. And so I'll come up with a title. And that's basically what this is all about, is May opening up a bank account. And it's also going to be about May being involved with YouTube and some of the processes that happen when you have a YouTube channel. So let's get going, shall we? <laughs> and once again, if you followed me at all, you know I like to keep my videos at about 15, 20 minutes because, you know, that's my attention span for one. <laughs> and I know it's primarily 10 or 15 minutes is most people's attention span on a, on a video also. So if uh, you don't like long videos, I'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Anyway, um, Baby May is my girlfriend, for those that don't know. And we've been together approximately a year and a half. And about a year ago, May came outside. I was sitting out in the backyard, <clears throat> and I was having my proverbial cup of coffee and playing a game on my phone or something. And she showed me a passbook savings account. This is a year ago. And I looked over and I said, what's that? And she just showed me and pointed at it. It was a savings account book. And I said, well, what is that? And she ran away. Okay, so that's just how May was. She was, she was just sort of like teasing me a little bit. And I didn't say anything more about it. But it was killing May. She wanted me to see this damn thing. And two or three days later, she breaks it out again and shows it to me. And I, and I knew what it was. I said, well, what is that? And she goes, secret, and then she puts it away. So that's just May. And a few more days go by, and she shows it to me. She lets me actually hold it and touch it. And it is a savings account from what's known as a community bank. A community bank is just what it sounds like. It's a little banking institution in the community here and I imagine I don't know this to be a fact but I imagine that they're fairly common throughout the Philippines it is not a big institutionalized financial institution like Chase or or Charles Schwab or Bank of America or Wells Fargo or any of that it is just what it is and it serves the purpose of the community um, a lot of the folks that live in the Philippines live in provinces. They have very simple lifestyles. They don't have a very sophisticated lifestyle. A lot of people are just like Baby May. Baby May worked for a living for many years in Manila. Her uh, eldest sister worked at a fruit stand. Um, her younger sister went to school and her very very youngest sister um, did not go to school so they've got one girl out of four that went to school and went to college the community bank is for the maze of the world 
and for the guys that own uh, their house or they have a piece of land and they have some mango trees and they pick the mangoes and they take it to the roadside and they sell the mangoes and they make a hundred pesos a day or 500 pesos or whatever it is. May would go off, May went off to Manila and worked for over 10 years as a caretaker and sent most of the money home to her parents. Her oldest sister worked at the fruit stand and did the same thing, lived a very simple life and donated most of the money to the family. And then Georgia Lynn is the third sister and she came after, after May and she's the one that went to school and got to go to college and got a nice job at a place called Cebuana. She's a manager, Cebuana being a money exchange place. Georgia Lynn is also married to a guy who also happens to work in the financial industry. He happens to work at this community bank. And so what they did was since May worked for over 10 years in Manila and sent the money home, just like the other sister did at the fruit stand. I know it's confusing, but that put Georgia Lynn through school. She was the one out of the four girls that got to go to school. The family was simple. The family was poor, hardworking. Father worked, mama worked, everybody worked, but they earned very little. Out of four girls, one got to go to college and May and her siblings and the parents financed all that. So what they did or what Georgia Lynn did was took May down to her husband's bank, the little community bank and opened her up an account. And they also started to, what's the word, re repatriate? They started to give May money. Um, in order to try to, they'll never be able to pay her back as much as she sent, but they wanted family's family. They wanted to give something back to May. So they were giving her some money to put into her savings account. Also, May was working after she got back from Manila, after being there about 10 or 11 years, as a caterer. So she would work 12 hour days, <clears throat> excuse me, and she would, you know, do catering stuff. She would put the plates on the table and wash the dishes and serve the food and get the napkins for when richer people had fiestas and birthdays and parties and this and that and the other. And that's how May continued to earn money once she came home from Manila. And she would earn about 300 to 350 pesos per day, $7 for about a 12 or a 14 hour day. And when I first met May, for the first six months that we were together, she continued to work as the caterer with her sister. Um, their sister worked at Subuana and she also did catering on the side. The husband was working at the bank. So everybody's hardworking people trying to save money trying to do the right thing, just set up for their future because life is tough out here, boys and girls, for these folks. Anyway, um, six months into it, our relationship, May finally showed me this passbook and then she showed me after a amount of time that she had, I think, 21 or 22,000 pesos saved. A pretty good amount of money, actually, if you think about it. And what struck me was two things. Number one, when she showed me the passbook and then she showed me the amount of money that she had, she was doing two things. She was sharing something that was very personal, but she was also expressing trust. That after six months of being with me, she trusted me to know her financial situation 
that she had money in the bank. This was something that was very sacred and very important to her. And um, she never asked me for a dime, ever. I mean, up to this day, a year and a half later, still never asked me for any money. Well, there's the occasional pair of shorts I buy her, and of course, a lemonade or, you know, eye makeup, but you know, the normal stuff. But has she ever come to me and said, hey, can I have five grand because something happened? Never, ever, never. So she has this little community bank thing. She's got X amount of dollars, I mean, pesos in it. And she continued to work and she continued to add to it. And she actually got it up over $30,000. I mean, pesos, apologize. Her sister that worked at the fruit stand in December, her husband died. And I didn't even know that. And so one day, I can remember, and I've, I've told this story before, um, she may ask me just to drop her off at this community bank. And then she was going to go do something with her other sister. I said, sure. And like a month later, it came up that this guy had died, and she never told me about it. And um, I think the conversation was something like, hey, how much you got in your savings account? You know, I was like giving her one of these. And she goes, I got a zip up, I got nothing. Said, what happened? And that's when she told me that this, this, the fruit stand sister, had her husband died. And she just gave her all of her money to help pay for the funeral and the burial and the this and that and the other. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me about that, that this guy passed away? He said, I didn't want to bother you with it. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me about the money? She goes, it's not your problem. She goes, it's our family. You know, it's, you take care of me here. Everything's cool. Um, and so I related that story many, many videos ago. And some guys heard it, and they actually donated some money to me and to help her build back up her savings account. And it really touched me too. And I said, you know what? I had, I had become monetized by that time on, on YouTube. And I, which meant I started getting paid. They start running the annoying ads you guys have to watch or skip, whatever you want to do. And I told her, I said, you know what? I'm going to just give you my YouTube money. And I'll make you a deal. And I said, why don't you come on YouTube with me? And you can help me and then that'll justify it and then when YouTube pays me my money um, for all the annoying ads they show I'll just put it into your little account over there and she says well I don't want to be on your YouTube channel I'm shy she says but I'll support your channel and I said okay and I said how are you gonna support it she says I'll get I'll get other people to go on your channel I don't want to do it I said okay no pressure and what do you know she started inviting girlfriends over, like Jira, my friend Ian's favorite video. <laughs> and, and, and she'd get these people over, and we would have these impromptu, nutty interviews, and we'd have a lot of laughs, and we had a lot of fun. And then one day, she invited over a girl that had her own YouTube channel. And I interviewed her, and we were talking about YouTube. And I was promoting, shamelessly, shame, shamelessly promoting her channel, which we encourage here. Anybody that has a YouTube channel is welcome to come here and shamelessly promote it. I'm all for it. I want everyone to have a YouTube channel and have success. So May had a conversation with the girl that had the YouTube channel I interviewed and then suddenly had a change of heart and started showing up on the channel with me. And one of the reasons she was so reticent about coming on the channel and didn't want to do it was she was terrified of comments. You see, gossip and chicka chicka and all this kind of stuff is super important to these women. And public opinion and all that. What will they say? And if they say something negative, it just crushes them. And so anyway, Baby May started making little appearances here on my little channel and comments started coming in from my awesome subscribers and they were saying, May's so cute, or May's so sweet, or May's so nice. 
And what that did is it gave May <clears throat> encouragement and some self-esteem and some confidence. And we've all kind of, who, anybody that's watched my channel for any amount of time has seen baby May kind of grow up and become more assertive and be more fun and be more outgoing and not so reserved and a little thick skin too. Not so concerned anymore about the comments like she was initially. Long story short, May started her own little channel and we got that promoted here on the channel, on my channel. And May finally, after a lot of videos, a lot of work, a lot of trial and error, you watch her first stuff compared to what she did now, it's almost fun to watch the changes and the modifications. I was, have always been totally hands off on anything that she did. And turns out, again, I don't want this to drag out forever, that she is now monetized. She is making some money. And YouTube sends you this congratulatory email saying, hey, congratulations, you've made a thousand subscribers. They send you that first. And then after you get 4,000 of watch hours, they send you another congratulatory email. And they say you qualify for AdSense, which means we can run ads. We're going to run ads on your, on your channel. And we're going to pay you for it. And so I said, that's awesome, baby. And she says, now what do we do? Because now I've got my own money coming in. And they don't pay you till you get to $100. And she hadn't got to that point yet. She was like $40 or something like that after months. And so I said, well, we just have to link up your bank, your community bank, to a PayPal account and then link that to your channel. So what's going to happen is YouTube is going to get you to $100 minimum. And then you, that's going to go into your PayPal account. And then your PayPal account will be linked to your community bank. And it's deposited automatically. You don't have to run down there with cash like we do. Well, lo and behold, the community bank, being a simple bank, it doesn't even have an ATM, much less an internet thing where you can transfer money. It doesn't work. It just doesn't happen. So, now the mission <laughs> begins. <laughs> we have to get May what we call a normal bank account. So, I said, how do you want to do this, baby? You want me to take you someplace and take you through? You know, like, she already knows how I am. So she goes, no. <laughs> I'll do it with my sister. I said, awesome. That's great. Today is Friday. Today is Friday. I don't know what date it is. The 18th or something like that. The 19th. And so... Um, May and her sister, a week ago today, last Friday, made plans to go down to Dumaguete to a place called Land Bank and open an account. And I said, more power to you. I don't want to be involved. I get to stay at home. I don't have to deal with the lines. I don't have to deal with the temperature because of the COVID. I don't have to get my body sprayed down with alcohol. You two go and I'll stay here in Bachelor Bliss and watch TV. So, may, and I can't drive her, because, or did I drive her? I can't remember, I think I did drive her down and drop her off and then I came home. And um, she met her sister. And then uh, I said, just take a trike home. Uh, or I'll call me and I'll pick you up. Something like that, it doesn't matter, I guess. So anyway, she did take a trike home and she was home within an hour because I took her down on Independence Day <laughs> and all the banks were closed. So her, her and her sister lined up with a bunch of other people waiting for the bank to open. Of course, Land Bank didn't bother to put a sign up and say, by the way, we're closed today. And everybody just sat there till nine o'clock or whenever they opened to find out that they weren't gonna open. So here comes baby May, all disappointed, didn't work. I said, oh well. 
So I said, the weekend came by. She didn't want to go on Monday because Monday is a psycho day. So her and her sister made arrangements to go on Tuesday. And again, this is Friday. So that was uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That was three days ago. They went down to Land Bank. They went into Land Bank and Land Bank told them, okay, you can open an account but you're going to need a ID and a barangay clearance. So May, I've got it here to show you. I have visual effects, by the way. May has, I hope I can keep this clear. May has an ID. She has what's called a postal ID. That just came in a while ago. And so her and her sister had to hump down and get a barangay clearance. This is where you go to the local barangay. And again, I was counting my lucky stars that I didn't have to go through that drill. Because usually when you go to the local barangay, they aren't there. They're either in a meeting or at lunch or they just didn't show up. So the fact that she got this thing is a miracle upon itself. And they marched themselves right back to Land Bank. And they said, okay, we've got your two IDs that you're requiring. And they said, fine, you do the application on our computer. And they said, okay, give us a computer. Well, we can't because the computers are down. <laughs> but here's the website. This is on Tuesday. And she, they said, you can go home and complete it on your own computer and print it out and bring it back and we'll sign you up. And I had given May, I think, 2,000 pesos or something like that to start the account there. So May comes marching back home again. She says, baby, I need you to go on the computer, please, and help me with this application because I don't understand the computer very good. I said, no problem. So it took us a while to get through the application with Land Bank. They're asking questions that I'm not clear about, asking questions that uh, May wasn't clear about the answer to, and she was real nervous about the whole thing. But long story short, because I told you it's going to be a long story, and I'm going to try to keep it short. Er, we got through the application for Land Bank, and we took it up to Valencia where we get our printing done, and they printed it out as told. And her and her sister on Wednesday, day before yesterday, went down to Land Bank with the Barangay clearance, with the ID, and with the application, which I don't have. Um, oh, what I do have, they, do want, they did want proof of income, which was on there, and they wanted a TIN number, which you get from from Google. So they're at Land Bank and Land Bank is, we've got it printed out, we've got the computer, we've got the barangay, we've got the ID. They won't open the bank. They said, no, you've got to go back on our computer and do it all over again because something's wrong. And that's when I got the phone call. Hey, we need you down here. <laughs> Okay, I'm on my way. So I go marching into Land Bank. Sister had to leave because she had to go back to work. And poor baby May's there by herself. And I went up to the manager. We'd stand around for like 20 minutes trying to get on a computer for me to do it all over again. And the, the, the manager said, well, what's wrong is you have to have a TIN number because it says she's self-employed. In other words, we're using her YouTube income as her source of income for Land Bank. And I said, okay. You know, if you guys can see it. There's the TIN number. She said, yeah, okay, but you need proof of income and, and a business name. Now, here you go. See Google, that's kind of a big company. And it says Baby May's Adventure. And, uh, 
Here's her proof of income. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Uh, but what is it? Is it backwards? I don't know. She's got 144 bucks made. That's income. Well, it's not the right kind of income. Well, what is the right kind of income? Well, it's got to have a proper TIN number. Well, let's get back to this. That's a TIN number. And this is Google. And that's income. And the woman couldn't argue with me, but she just said, well, it's still not right. And my blood pressure, it make it see it. You know, my blood pressure started going like this. Amaze and amazement, because I'm talking not mad. I'm just answering. I'm like, well, you want it? Here it is. And you need that? You got it right here. I got the complete printed out computer. The computer says it's okay. We've got the barangue. We've got the ID. The checklist is full. Take our money and open the account. It's simple. We're not trying to borrow money. Now I understand proving income, but giving you money, why is this becoming such a chore? And the woman couldn't answer my question, and I didn't get snippy with her, but I was asking what I felt to be legitimate questions. So I said, you know what, babe? I said, let's get out of here. This is, we're going to get nowhere fast. And May's like, yeah, okay, let's go. And she's really cracked. So we go to Kimco. I need an oil change, transmission, fluid, checked. And lo and behold, across the street is an old bank that I used to have called BDO. And I said, you know what, baby, while the Kimco's getting serviced, let's walk over there to BDO and see what they've got to say. Okay. So we march into BDO, sit down. And the first thing the guy says, it's a Filipino guy, he goes, hey, your name's Paul. I said, yeah. He says, I watch your YouTube channel. I said, cool, brother. Thank you very much. He said, how can I help you? I said, this is Baby May. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, said, I said, this is what we went through at Land Bank. Ba 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 I said, she's got a postal ID and she's got a barangay clearance. Will that open up an account? He goes, listen, she needs two forms of ID. The postal is fine, but the barangay, unfortunately, we don't accept. But what you can get, which is easy enough, is a police report or a police clearance. Sorry, I'm not looking at you. You need a, uh, sorry, I got my little things here. Told you it was gonna be one. You need a police clearance clearance certificate and if you come back with a police certificate clearance and that postal ID will open up your account right here right now 2,000 pesos done deal you'll be home I said awesome I said baby man do you know where the police station is she goes I sure do because I know where it is in Valencia but I don't know where it is in Dumaguete so we hop we go over to Kimco, just so happens the oil change is done. We get on that little bad boy. We scoot over to the police station, and the police station says, sure, we'll give you a police clearance, but first you have to get three other items. <laughs> now, you'd think to get a police clearance, I would think. You just need like a thumbprint, you know, and they run a background check. Isn't that what a police clearance does? But I brought some of this stuff along. We had to first go to, I don't know if you can see it, the office of the treasurer. That was in one location. We went over there and we paid 60 pesos. I've got this stapled. Then we had to go to, oh wait, here's another office of the treasurer, which looks the same, but actually is different. And then we were going to the municipality building, but it was under renovation, so we had to go to another location. And what is this thing called? Oh, 
This is, a, you can't see it because it's stapled. Community tax certificate. See right here? Check it out, boys. We went there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Take my word for it. You can trust the old dog. It's stamped. It's signed. It's ready to go. It cost 60 pesos. So we went to three different places to pay 60 pesos. And what did we do at those three places? We filled out the same form. Her name, her address, her age, if she's a female, um, I don't know, not even her hair color, showed her postal ID, they stamped it, they took the money. We moved over to office number two, name, address, female, blah, 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 paid 60 pesos, they stamped it, and each time we had to wait in a line. Third place, final place we go, we get the infamous police clearance with the picture and the ID, and we go back to BDO. And Baby May is just so, it's hot, it's, she's nervous, and God love her, but when May gets emotional, it, this was so important to her to open up this account, to have this real live checking account that will work with her little Google thing. We haven't done the PayPal yet, of course, but that's another bridge we'll cross. And we, it's, I've got another story to tell you, I'll tell you another time, because I don't want to take this whole video up to two hours. By the time we got to BDO, May, when she gets anxious or excited or nervous, and this was like, this was like life or death to her that she gets this. It's very important to her. You have no idea that her hands were shaking. And she gets that way. It's almost like a palsy. Um, I've seen it two or three times when she gets really upset or when she's emotional or something's just wrong or she like this, she couldn't write. So I was writing out the application, and I was BSing with the guy that knew my channel, because we went back and saw the same guy. And I was asking May questions, like, what's your mother's maiden name? Because this was never been on. And she didn't know what a maiden name was. She goes, I go, what was your mom's name before she was married to your father? She goes, I don't know. She's always been married since I've known her, which makes sense, <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> so we had to send a text off to another sister, and finally, we got the answer to that question. And then we're filling it out, and it needed another relative. And I said, what's your dad's name? What? She goes, well, Esperanza, you know, just give me your last name. I said, no, what's his first name? She goes, Dad. <laughs> I said, no, but he's got a, a given name. You know, like, you're May. I said, what's his name? She goes, I can't remember. <laughs> I said, well, does he have Facebook? She goes, yeah. So now we've got to get back online. We're at the bank. <laughs> and she goes, oh, yeah, it's Jimmy. <laughs> she couldn't remember her father's name. This has been such a long day. So what we did was we filled this all out. And I said to the guy, I said, listen, man, once this is done, can you assure me that She's going to get paid from Google, and we have to set up a PayPal account. And once we do the PayPal account, are we going to be able to link our PayPal account or her PayPal account to BDO and transfer money over? He said, absolutely, positively. I said, okay, cool. He goes, okay, just wait over there while we process it. We wait over there. They call May's name. We go over, we see another woman. And this woman is trying to get us to give her 10,000 pesos because now you get a passbook. With 2,000 pesos, all you get is a debit card. And I said, you just need a debit card, babe. You know, start there. If you want to upgrade later, we'll do it. But let's, let's test the waters here. And so I asked the woman the same question. I said, you know, she's going to be linking a PayPal account to this. Is that cool? 
Because trust but verify is what Ronald Reagan always said. You know, two opinions are better than one. And she said, well, yes and no. She said, some people have PayPal and they don't have any problem whatsoever. They can transfer money to our bank and they don't have one issue. She said, but to be perfectly honest with you, sir, some people have nothing but grief. I said, well, I appreciate your transparency. Thank you. And so in a week or two weeks or whatever it's going to be, we're going to go back to BDO and we're going to pick up May's little debit card. And I said, you know what we're going to do, baby? She said, what's that? And I said, as soon as you get this debit card, we're also going to go get you Phil Health, which she needs, which is insurance. I didn't know this, but she had let her Phil Health lapse. Phil Health being kind of like the government subsidized medical care that they have here. It's 2,500 pesos per year, $50. And that's going to be our mission this week. We're going to go sign baby May up for Phil Health. Number one, so that she has the coverage. And number two, she has yet another form of ID. And I said, after we get this done at BDO, we're going to go across the street to BPI and do it all over again. Bank of the Philippine Islands. We're going to open you up another account. And after we get that done, we're going to go to a place called Community Bank or whatever it's called, Commercial Bank, which I've heard is a good place, or wherever. We're going to go to another bank, and we're going to open you up three accounts. Why are you going to do that? I said, because if PayPal doesn't work at BDL, we can link another account, we can link another account, we can link as many accounts as we want to PayPal. And I don't ever want you to have aggravation with money being in limbo. I want you to be able to access it. And here's another thing, my little piece of advice to May. I'm not giving you advice, I'm giving it to May. I said, there's going to come a time where you're going to want to go get yourself a thousand pesos because you need it for whatever. And you're going to wander up to BDO and the machine's going to say out of service because that happens here a lot or it's just out of money or it's under maintenance or it's just not working. I said, so you'll be able to walk across the street and go to BPI where their ATM is working at nine o'clock at night when you still need that thousand now and you will be able to get your money. And she says, oh, daddy, Paul, you're such a genius. <laughs> Now, here's the caveat. Google has one security or what's it called? Security, I guess, device in place where before they will release the money, the, the, how much money she got? $114 or $144 or whatever it is she's made. Before they will actually release that, to a PayPal account, they have to verify May's address. It, they send you a six digit code. They mailed one to me. I got it when I got monetized. I put it in the computer. They accepted it, took two days. Then they sent me an email saying, okay, we verified your address. Now we need to verify something else, which I forget what it was, but I think it was an email address or some, some sort of thing. So Google keeps torturing you until they give you your money. But I eventually got through that system. And you say, well, what's the big deal, Paul? All May's got to do is get her piece of mail with the six digit code on it. Well, guess what? Google, as far, I always thought that, I still think that Google lives in a helium balloon filled with man buns and skinny jean people. But rumor has it that I'm wrong on that and that they're based somewhere in California or San Francisco or at least in America. And uh, since the COVID thing, we're not getting any mail from America. So May can't get her six digit code to activate her account. So you're going to have to stay tuned on what happens with that because I honestly don't know. There's no way to contact Google. Trust me, I've tried. 
I've tried to give them a piece of my mind a couple of times, but they don't want it. Um, Twitter, you can sometimes squeak at that. I am under the impression or the understanding that there is a four month window that Google will let that money sit there until they just dissolve it. So if she doesn't get this digit code within like the next 90 days, I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, hopefully, mail will start coming back to the Philippines. It takes a month for one letter to get from Las Vegas to here in Dumaguete, because I've had it mailed to me before. That's how long it took. So stay tuned on that. So that is the story of a province girl opening up a bank account in Dumaguete. I just want you to know that when we started the endeavor, we left the house at 7 o'clock in the morning, and by the time it was all wrapped up, all the certificates were done, everything was stamped, and May had an actual receipt for 2,000 pesos that she was the proud owner of a bank account. We left the house at 7 o'clock. We got home at 3.45 in the afternoon to open up a bank account. I can remember opening up a bank account in the States. It took about 15 minutes. I showed them my ID. They went like this. How much do you want to deposit? I'll give you $500. Take the money. There you go. Thank you, sir. We'll mail you a card. Any questions, come check with us. Took us a day to make that happen. So, I hopefully by relaying this story, if you're watching this and you're thinking about opening up a bank account here, for me it was relatively simple. I had to have two pieces of ID and I also knew a guy that knew a guy that helped me juice it in. I've since shut down my bank account out here because I don't like it. I just keep my American bank account and that's it. But May needs it. The other point of this story, I told you it was going to take a long time, is that I want May to travel with me. May is going to need a passport. So May needs to have, I'm sure, a bank account. I'm sure she's going to need a barangay clearance and a police clearance. And God only knows what other clearance. So I'm relieved that I think we've got a lot of the nonsense out of the way when we're able to go down and apply for a passport for May. It's going to be, from what I understand, a big challenge the first time May tries to leave the country, especially with a guy like me that's older than her. They're afraid that they're going to leave and not come back that they're gonna leave and I'm taking her over to be a sex slave. That we're gonna leave and they're gonna be trying to go to work wherever they're going. Um, so by having one, two, three pieces, three bank accounts with X amount of dollars in it will show that she's more stable. She's saving up her money to buy a piece of land if God help us, we can get the money together and she can buy this little parcel of land. That's another tie to the community. Um, the fact that she works on YouTube and can prove that she's got an income will help her as far as her validity of not needing to go to another country to get a job. She's got one. Um, she'll need to have money in her pocket. Uh, we're going to try something simple like Malaysia the first time. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew I wouldn't make it through this without coughing. So that's my long-ass winded story about opening up a bank account for Baby May. And there's more to it. I'm sure I forgot a lot of it. But I just wanted to let you know what... I, I think what I really wanted you to, 
to, to get out of this, if anything, is that a lot of us YouTubers portray this as this paradise that we live in. And it's great. I've got a beautiful girlfriend. I've got a, I, I have a lot of great friends. But day-to-day -day living here is far from paradise. And you have to have a temperament that can handle it. Okay? So, that's me preaching to you, I guess. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in there if you managed to do it. <laughs> I think we're going to go later and interview one of May's friends. She just made an announcement to that. Uh, we're going to try to go have a cup of coffee with Gio. And, uh, and we're going to be live on Sunday. I'll put up a uh, Chigadero. I'll put up a, an announcement that BB, Baby May and I are going to be live on Sunday. Nine o'clock our time. Okay? Peace out. I love you all. Bye-bye.